Hello guys, we are back with our next lecture. In this lecture, let us go through elements of transport layer guys. Guys, initially we will be discussing about addresses, like how addressing is done, like what is the addressing type in transport layer. Okay, so then we will be discussing about how the connections are made and how data is transferred. After that, we will be discussing about the termination of connection. So we will be discussing about these four topics in this elements of transport layer. Guys, guys these things are really important guys, because to understand the logics behind any kind of connection establishment these are the three steps which will be going on guys so it is always recommended to understand the concept behind it okay so basically we did discuss about transport layer right so i told you so basically if you are trying to send data from one application to another application basically you need to have a specific address guys basically when you are when we discussed about in network layer in that we were able to reach till the network but we don't know to which system the data should be transferred or which port sorry which net which system we know based on the ip address but we don't know which port or which application needs it so that thing like, like which application so each and every application which is receiving data from internet will be having a separate port number guys Guys, we'll be discussing about these port numbers also, like how what are reserved and what are unreserved and all those things. Don't worry. Okay. So it will be having a specific port number. So now for now you assume that it is a number. That's it. Okay. So it's a special number for the that application. And there could be multiple applications. In your system, there could be one application which is taking 8080. And in my system, it, that could be taken by some other application. Like that. Like that also it is possible. Okay. Okay. So if you take a small example here. So assume that a particular so I'll, let me give just give me a second guys so assume that here is your applications guys so this is your one application second application third application fourth application and this is your network now inside your network you are having four applications assume that this application is trying to send a data to this application so if you use only network layer okay you can reach till here right yes where sorry till here or till here but you don't know to which application you should you should send right yes so basically the transport layer is the one which is responsible for selecting to which port number or which exact location it should go guys you'll be going through the theory you'll be getting a clear idea don't worry okay so when an application process like websites to request to a connection to a remote application process it must specify which one to connect Commonly, we call them as addresses. So basically, if you want to open a website, you will be writing its address, right? So in the same way, if you want to communication with an application, you need to send the address. So previously, we discussed about network layer, right? So in network layer, we used IP address. So IP address is popularly called as a network service access point, guys. NSAP. Okay. So in that, we are having only IP address. So using only IP address, you can go to some system which has multiple applications. You cannot say that this application is in request of the data. You cannot define in that way. Okay. So hence, similarly here in transport layer, we have port number. So basically along with IP address, you'll be specifying the port number also. So IP address is used by the network layer to reach till network. So after that, it will be using the port number to find the address. So assume that you are in a particular city, right? Okay. So when your friend asks, he's also from local. Okay. Assume in that way. And you are you need to say your address so first you will be saying the area name right yes you, you will be staying in somewhere in some area a okay and then you will be saying that you are in street number 10 or street number 12 in that way right yes so this is nothing but the whole address like the area you can say and this is the approx location right so here you can even say that this is the street number and this is the exact house number because here we are getting the application number directly, right? So which port it is using. So you can say that this is nothing but the house number that we are using. That is transport layer. Whereas network layer support so shows you the a street or the area name. Okay. Okay. So based on the communication, we need to do some kind of processes, right? We'll be discussing about them. Don't worry, like connection establishment and all those things. Okay. So this is a small example, guys, which you can observe here. So I discussed about it. So basically from here, if a particular application needs, it transmits a through all the layers and it will be reaching to the network. So once it is reached to the network based on that particular port number specified by the sender or the application will be identifying to which it should be sent. Okay. So now let us go through the three major steps guys. So the first step is nothing but connection establishment and the second step is nothing but transmitting the data and the third step is nothing but terminating or releasing the connection. 
okay so let us continue okay so connection establishment so why we need to establish connection guys because we are using connection oriented so whenever you are using connection oriented first you need to get the path right so how you are trying to go you need to identify the path and you will be sending all your data or packets you can call everything in that path only okay okay so when we think of a connection establishment it looks very simple and straightforward but the problem occurs when the network losses or start duplicate packets okay sorry for that okay so assume that you want to connect two systems you we will be thinking as usual we'll be thinking that okay that's really simple right so you can connect them with cable or anything or anything we can do right you'll be thinking that it is really easy like even in a huge network you'll be saying that that's really easy we can do it you can you'll be thinking like that but there are some issues guys so there could be multiple possibilities like there is a network loss like some kind of connection has been lost or sometimes you are storing the duplicates so there could be multiple issues guys guys we discussed all these topics in detail in a data communication subject guys in our last semester we completed this subject so if you want in detail expression you can just watch those lectures in i think in unit 3 where we discussed about these uh, protocols we discussed about multiple uh, like sliding window and all those protocols like how data is transferred so if you want in detail explanation you can watch that and come back here okay okay so when there is a heavy congestion on the subnet so basically we, we will be facing some kind of issues like network loss or duplicate packets issue or heavy congestion so to solve these kind of problems we will be using a process that is called as three handshake guys so three handshake is nothing but you can say that initially you will be requesting for it you will be getting the acknowledgement and then you'll be transmitting the data that's it so this is the three step shall i repeat yes so initially assume these two are the things so initially you should send the request it will send the acknowledgement then you will start sending the data so these are the three steps guys okay okay so normal operation so when there is no issue okay so normal operation host one chooses a sequence number so sequence number is nothing but just to identify guys so if you recall we did discuss about sliding window right and all those things so in everything we will be using the sequence numbers to identify which packets are received and which packets are not received so assume that sequence number has one or anything as it depends on you okay so host choose one number that we gave as sequence number x sends a packet sends a request connection sorry first he will be requesting right so he requested to host to then host to received and replies with the acknowledgement of x and assigns its own initial sequence number as y okay so if you notice here it is sending the acknowledgement number of x and it is saying that it's a sequence number is y okay so it is sending the data and it is it is saying that it received the data here by using this acknowledgement okay so after that you will be sending the data that's it so now the connection is established so we are sending the data step one step two step three this is nothing but the three-way handshake guys okay so finally host one acts as a, sorry sorry host one acknowledges and chooses as an initial sequence number and he starts sending the data that's it okay so now you might be having a doubt that okay this is really simple right so he'll be sending a request he'll be accepting and he'll be sending acknowledgement he'll be sending it that's it right yes but there are some drawbacks like there are some issues which are not intentionally happening but they could happen okay so the first drawback here is nothing but in case two we'll be seeing delayed duplicate control guys the name of that is so here the whole thing is based on requesting right so the host 2 is always active and he is listening, only he is listening. And now if a host 1 is sending the request, he is ready to accept it. So assume that he sent a request, but the whole connection and everything is done. Uh, guys, one more thing. Remember that after the whole transfer, we will be closing the connection from both the sides. First, the server will, client will be sending and after that, the server will be responding. Okay. And they will be disconnecting it. Okay. So delayed duplicate is nothing but assume that they closed the connection, but the first transmitted request was not closed it was still transmitting and at the end somehow it was generated and it was a transmitting and it received basically host one did not send any request but intermediate request which was requested previously was sent okay so it was received by host two so host two don't know that and host two told that okay you want the day you want to transfer data or you want to request data okay here you go with the acknowledgement so it is sending the acknowledgement of se sequence number y and acknowledgement of x so if you notice here here there is an acknowledgement so in this situation there is an issue right so for these kind of issues to resolve you will be sending a reject packet guys 
so reject is nothing but no i didn't send any data i think you are understanding in the wrong way like that you will be saying so you can assume this has a wrong call guys so you'll be saying that hello this is a wrong call sorry you'll be saying like that right yes so assume due to some delay host one requested request went too late from old connection so the old connection was closed but the request was still going but host two doesn't know that that hence it gives an acknowledgement so in that situation the host one acknowledges with a reject message so in that way it will be working guys okay so let us go through the third case that is nothing but duplicate connection request and duplicate acknowledgement okay so here let us assume both the possibilities so the acknowledgement was also duplicate so this is this might sound a bit funny right yes so host 2 so if you notice here host 1 the same issue which was discussed previously and assume that the same issue like data is also sent from previous stage and it was received by the host 2 so even this will also create an issue right yes so host 2 receives a delay connection request and replies to it in this point second delayed second delayed duplicate from old connection with acknowledgement of x, x y x and z sent to host 2 but the sequence number y is not acknowledged from the host hence both are rejected so if you notice here it sent a request x okay so this was also from previous only it was sent okay so it assumed that it was the newest one and it responded with y and it said uh, acknowledged for x but in between there is even the data is also delayed so there is a data packet data sequence x acknowledgement to y and it is sending so here they noticed that this is also duplicate but the server or the host too doesn't know that so once this request is received here it will be sending a reject packet so indirectly whatever connections are in between everything will be lost guys so these are all things this is rejected this is also rejected in that way it will be working okay okay so now we discussed about connection establishment right okay so once connection is established the data can be transferred smoothly without okay so now let us continue with how the connections are released guys so now your whole transmission of data and everything is done so now you want to terminate the connection or release the connection to be clear or to be simple okay okay so the first steps like why you are doing this release guys because we don't know that the server or the client are still requesting for data or not so basically you need to get a confirmation right so assume that you and your friend are having a conversation on a call okay so like your friend called you and he told all the information that he wants to say and once his information sharing and everything is done he just disconnected the call but you wanted to say something this happens most commonly guys so even i experience this most of the time okay okay right so we'll be we'll be having this idea right yes so that is the reason why most of the members will be having a end conversation that is nothing but they'll be saying okay bye so then the other person will also say bye and then they will be disconnecting the call so this process is nothing but a symmetric release guys and this process only one guy deciding and disconnecting is nothing but a symmetric release got it yes so connection release is easier than establishment yes because we'll be just say, saying him okay bye and he'll be saying bye done we'll be disconnecting the call simple whereas to connect you need to have the signals and you need to connect to the call you need to dial the number and all those things right yes you need to know the address basically i'm saying dial the call means in our networking okay so asymmetric release in asymmetric release either sides can release the connection and there may be no chance there is a chance of loss of data like a phone call so basically in phone calls like few of our friends even they disconnect the call once their conversation is done so that will be an issue yes similarly symmetric release both sides they should release separately so basically if one person says bye the other person should also say bye so here we will be sending a connection release request guys you need to understand that that is nothing but cr in shortcut we'll be calling it okay okay so we discussed about this asymmetric right so first let us go through a small example for asymmetric like what will be the issue okay so abrupt disconnection with loss of data so assume that you sent the host one is sending the whole sending data is done guys okay so assume that is the host one sent a request for the host two to release host two sent an acknowledgement and host one got an idea that still i need to send the data and host one is sending data okay so host one is sending data sending data sending data and that process continued and in between host two got an idea that okay let us disconnect the call or disconnect the connection so it disconnected the connection so that info is still transmitting to host one 
okay whereas the host one don't know about that but the host one has sent the data already hence the host two is not even ready to collect the call or ready to listen to the call hence host one sent data is lost in between so if you notice here so here is the point where you, the both they got collided or you can say that both they got identified in our diagram okay so from here the data loss has occurred and all the data in between so if there if I, here i wrote only one there could be multiple data also so all of them will be lost so you can just go through the theory guys the explanation which i gave was written in the theory okay okay so hence now you will be saying that okay now asymmetric calls or asymmetric release is not at all good you you are you will agree right yes so now the normal symmetric connection will be in this way first you will be sending a release data release after that you will be waiting for the host to release the data so here in between these releases you will not wait for infinite time guys you will be waiting for a specific time you will be starting a timer and you will be waiting okay so assume that your waiting timer is 60 seconds assume just for example i am saying i okay okay so you sent the data and you will be waiting for 60 seconds so if there is a no response for 60 seconds you will be sending the packet again you will not say that okay he is not replying i'll be disconnecting the call no you will be waiting until he responds so that is nothing but the normal so in normal situation you will automatically get so you send the request you got the request hence you release the request so you sent an acknowledgement that okay i released the network so you will be releasing the network simple guys the explanation that i gave was written in the theory you can just go through it okay similarly we are having the final acknowledgement loss so assume that you sent a request to release and he also sent a request to release both of you are ready to release but you need to finalize it right so you sent an acknowledgement but in between it is lost so in this situation as he received the acknowledgement or the release request first he will be waiting for that particular timer so once that timer is done he will be automatically releasing it guys so he will be saying it as timeout and he will be releasing the connection as once the acknowledgement is sent host one will also release it guys so that is the reason why after some particular time we are releasing right yes so the logic here is both of them are indirectly ready after two steps only the third step is nothing but just a small acknowledgement so the acknowledgement you can say that it is not so mandatory to release the connection okay similarly response lost so basically here the response only the this sent message is only lost so once we are going through the diagram we'll be having a clear idea so here is the diagram okay so here the data or the request is a sent data request sorry okay so basically you are releasing right so data release request is sent here okay so it is a sent but the response which was given by host 2 is lost so now host 1 is still thinking that okay whether he is ready to release or not okay let us ask again so it will be waiting for some time once the timeout is done it will again send the request because here it is not confirmed that he is ready so until he is ready it will be continuing so it will be sending again and here it is received so hence it will be sending the acknowledgement and releasing is done so here you are retransmitting it so in between if there is a loss you will be retransmitting it okay similarly both responses are subsequently lost so if they are repeatedly lost so assume that this is sending this is lost this is sending this is lost so in this situation they will be waiting for some time and at the end they will give up guys after some time after that they will be directly releasing both the connections okay so this is how the connections are established data transferred and the release guys so sorry for the a bit lengthy lecture guys because it's almost 16 to 17 minutes now okay so i hope everyone got some basic idea about the transport layer protocols right elements of transport layer protocol yes so we discussed about addressing and how the connection is established data transfer and release okay okay so in the next lecture we will be going through the flow control and buffering okay so let us meet in the next lecture thank you thanks for watching